Okay, guess what? We are finally talking NFL mock drafts, and that is starting right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. My name is Greg. If you're new here, thank you for stumbling on this channel. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy the content and hopefully we will bring you something that you do enjoy. That being said, let's get into today's video. So let's not talk about the sell of the Washington Commanders or anything like that. No, 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 no. We're getting close to draft time, so we need to start talking about the NFL draft. And what do we want to do as the Washington Commanders? Well, folks, I think what we need to do is, first of all, we need to start talking about it. So here I'm, you know, I sat down and I looked at all of the mock drafts, at least for the first round. And of course, you know, usually the first round is a little bit easier because. Well, you know, it's hard to get the first round wrong, right? Well, I don't know. I can I can think of plenty of first round busts that have happened with Washington team over the last several decades. So let's not go there. But, you know, looking at what we need here for the Washington Commanders, and I tend to go with the rule of thumb that I think BPA is always the best way to go. What does that mean, best player available? Um, I think that best player available is the route to go because that means that as you go along, you're building up, you're grabbing the best player that's available at that position. This is inadvertently what this does. This builds your team up. You're getting a higher quality player. Now, you may have a lot of depth at that position. You're like, why are we getting another offensive, you know, tackle? Bad, <laughs> probably a bad thing because, you know, I think we need a better high quality offensive tackle. But I'm just saying, you know, what if it's a wide receiver? What if it's something like that? It's like, okay, I think we're good with wide receiver. Why are we picking it? Well, because it's the best player available at that position. And what good teams do as they build along is they they grab these best players. And that's how you kind of build up the team. Now, that's the reason why that you go out with free agency and you try to address areas of need. You know, that's why the Washington Commanders went and they grabbed uh, some offensive linemen during the free agencies, uh, free agency period, because those are areas of need, right? You need guys, you need depth on that offensive line. Uh, and you got guys who Ron Rivera loves this term position flex, right? You got guys like Gates who can play guard and center. It seems like center was definitely a spot that we really needed a lot of help on because guys kept getting injured. So now we got someone who can be flexible, who can move into that center spot. Who who knows, maybe he will challenge for that center spot this year. But we got areas in need that I think we sort of addressed, but we also are in a position that we could still fill those positions that I still feel like could be areas of need through the draft if they happen to be the best player available. Now, so who would be the best player available if we decided that we wanted to draft an offensive lineman? Well, I'm looking at, for our 16th pick, I'm looking at somebody like Osiris Torrance, who's an offensive guard. Now, do we need another offensive guard? Well, maybe not, but he's an offensive guard who would be a first-round pick. Now, we lost our first-round pick and Brandon Sheriff, uh, you know, of course, last year. So having another offensive uh, guard who's a first-round pick would be great. Um, you know, of course, we lost, you know, other first-round picks, uh, first-rounders like Trent Williams, who, of course, you know, great left tackle. Um, so being able to get that type of 
you know, talent back on the offensive line, even with some of the pickups that we had in free agency, like the Andrew Wileys, like the the Nick Gates and the Trent Scotts and, and guys like that, I still feel like there's room to draft somebody like Osiris uh, Torrance. And, you know, again, that's if, that is only if he happens to be available at that 16th spot. Now, what if he's not? What, what if he's not? Okay, then maybe if I'm looking at the best player available and it turns out to be, oh, let's say Paris Johnson Jr., who is an offensive tackle. And we know we like our Ohio State guys just like we like our Bama guys. So maybe we go with offensive tackle. Um, You know, it looks like that we may be moving... Um, Kazumi to right guard. Maybe we have an offensive tackle in Paris Johnson that we put in there. Um, now he he is more of a right tackle. Who knows? Maybe he can be moved to left tackle. I, but he can at least be a solid right tackle there for us. We di- we know we can move Kazumi inside to that right guard spot, and then you've got. Um, you've got Gates there who could do uh, some wonders there on the, the left guard spot, maybe center. We still got Charles Leno. I know that a lot of people feel like, okay, he is an ordinary left tackle, but I thought he did okay. I mean, he's not the greatest, but he's not the worst. I thought he held his own. Uh, but we, you know, if you're going to go best player available, it's also great if that best player available also happens to be somebody who could fill a spot of need. And I think you can never have enough great offensive linemen. And so being able to get somebody like um, a Paris Johnson Jr. or Osiris uh, Torrance, I think, could could bold well for the Washington Commanders. Um, so, you know, it, it's guys like that. Now, we don't have to necessarily go, you know, we don't have to go to the offensive line. We could go, you know, cornerback. You know, cor- but I also look at cornerback as almost an area of need as well because, you know, I feel like that Benjamin St. Juice is really. I think he solidified himself on the outside there. I think he's he's great there, and of course we've got our safeties with uh, Derek Forrest, with Cameron Curl. Um, guys like that. We also have some good depth with Danny Johnson, uh, Jeremy Reeves. Um, and then, of course, you got Kendall Fuller, uh, Fuller on the other side. I think we could use another outside cornerback that could push Fuller to the inside. And I think that that would be the perfect combination for our secondary, for our, you know, uh, to really solidify that defense. Now, certainly we could we could use some linebacking <laughs> linebackers again, but I think uh, you know Jamie Davis. He certainly he he answered the call and the criticisms at the beginning of last year. I think he played well, but we can we can use some more depth there at, at linebacker. But I really think when it all comes down to it, best player available is what. I think the Washington Commanders need to do. If it's not the best player available, if they don't like what they see at that number 16 spot, I hope that the Washington Commanders will trade down, pick up another draft pick, you know, find somebody they like better at a, uh, you know, a much lower draft pick in the first round, pick up an extra draft pick, and really, um, you know, fill out their roster like that. I, I really think that, I don't know, I think that Ron Rivera's done pretty well in the draft. You know, I haven't seen too much within the draft that he has gotten wrong. Um, now, you know, there are some players from last year that were like, okay, we hadn't seen anything out of these guys yet. But who knows? Second year, I don't always give, like, you know, especially if you look at, guys who are drafted in the fifth or sixth round, you know, those are the guys that may come on after, you know, their second season, third season. 
you know, they get better after that. Their rookie season, maybe not so much. So I don't give a lot of credence to that. But I really think overall, I think Ramaveris did a pretty decent job with the draft. Um, so I think that going into this draft, you don't draft with areas of need. I just think that that's always been a big mistake. And the thing is, what you wind up doing is you wind up really, you wind up drafting guys that may not pan out, that they may be an area of need for that, but then, you know, later on they sign a contract with somebody else and then you're right back to where you start from. I think you build up as you go along. You get the best players available. You also use free agency. You you use all of that together. You make some trades. That's the way that you really build up the team. And, I, you know, I I have seen a transformation of the team. I have seen a much better group of players. And, you know, I, I, dare I say a higher quality group of players with the exception of the offensive line. I felt like the offensive line took a step back. And that's one thing I have criticized Ron Rivera on is the offensive line. I think everywhere else I have seen some, you know, we've always seemed like we've always struggled having enough wide receivers. Now we've got too many. It almost looks like we've, we are stacked at wide receiver. I think we're going to be stacked at running back and who knows, maybe we pick up the other Robinson in the draft. If he's the best player available, you definitely draft him. So there you go. I mean, you know, Ron Rivera, I think, is building it right in that respect. But I think he does need to look at the offensive line. What? Just let me know what you think, folks. I mean, I just, I really feel like best player available. I'm going to sit back. I'm not going to be disappointed who we pick. It's probably not going to be a sexy pick, but it's just going to be who's available. If we draft uh, or if we if we trade down, we trade down, we get more draft picks. I always love that because you know you're getting more quality, you're getting more picks, and get more opportunities to fill out your roster. Folks, let me know in the comments what you think. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.